السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين وفرانك اللهم وإليك المصير يا رب uh, I would like to welcome you to this new series uh, and uh, this uh, uh, series inshallah will be focused on our heart so uh, this is uh, a series of the principles of religion. So we will be talking, we will be discussing acts of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be talking uh, in another series, in the second series about the good character of a Muslim. And uh, other series will include other related uh, topics, inshallah. So the, the reason for having this series is to get us uh, ready to the day where we are going, when we are going to leave this dunya. So it has a secret in strengthening our Iman. It has a secret of uh, strengthening our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has a secret of uh, getting us closer to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each and every Muslim should have special proofs, should have special uh, ways of proving whatever he's saying when discussing issues about uh, our, our religion. So these, these proofs from Quran and Sunnah should, should be in our hearts so that we uh, we talk about them, we say them as proof when we need them. So we want to get ready for the day when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we ask ourselves, are we ready? If the angel of death comes to us and tells us, this is your time. Are we going to say, Alhamdulillah, Ghada Nalqa Al Ahibba, Muhammad Wa Sahba? Oh, Alhamdulillah, we're going to meet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions and the loved ones. Are we ready? Or are we asking, are we, are we just getting uh, surprised? Oh my God, I did not do this. I did not, not do that. I did this. I should not have done it. I I, I should have acted so and so at this uh, incident and so and so at this time. So where are we? We want to get ready for the day that we are going to leave this dunya. We want to get ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked to us and told us about that time that we have to get ready. And the first thing that we can get ready by is his words when he told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salli salataka ka'annaka muwadda'a. Pray your prayer. So perform your prayer as if it is your, as if it was your last prayer. 
you are praying what you're praying dhuhr then pray as if you this dhuhr prayer is the last prayer that you are going to perform in this dunya so how would you do it how would you do this this salah how would, how would you how would you uh, perform this salah so you th you would think this is my last salah i need to perform it to with the most perfection i can so my heart should be present in this salah I should be aware of each and every letter I'm going to say. So if there is a reward after this salah, after this prayer, I want to get all the reward. I don't want to miss any of this reward. So this is what it means to salli salataka ka'annaka muwadda' perform your prayer as if it was your last prayer get your heart present in your salah now sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us a hint of how to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of how to prepare our heart to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our heart should be full alert. So this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us. So the key of happiness is to follow the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because with each movement, with, e with each uh, uh, action that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu has done, there is a secret. There is a wisdom. There is light. So we want to get the wisdom, we want to get the secrets, we want to get the light of the sunnah by following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some people say, uh, we are not going to, to pray the sunnah or uh we we don't want to say it we don't want to do anything that uh, uh prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did any extra we want to do, we want to pray only the fard so whoever leaves the sunnah of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam whoever does that can be this can be explained in two ways that he is not this person is not convinced in following the sunnah of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and doing what he did or being ignorant So why do we follow the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why do we emulate Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why do we want to do the same that say the same things that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We want to do all that just to be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the goal of following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's one way of showing our love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the goal of following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this series is to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get us ready for the day 
when we are going to leave this dunya? How do we want that day to be? We want it to be the happiest. We want it to be the, the day. We want this day to be the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with everything that we do on that day. Or our actions are sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other reason. We want you to be pleased with us, ya Allah. We want to meet you when you are pleased with us, ya Allah. We want to be with the group about whom you said in the Quran several times, Radhi Allahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with the with this with this group of people and this group of people is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can someone be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when someone witnesses whatever goodness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for him then he will be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how are we going to get ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We want to perform our prayer. And I'm going to, to say a list now, and we will be talking about each and every one of these aspects. So, we want to perform our prayer. This is the first and most important thing. When we pray, we want this prayer to be performed. In, in Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَةِ Those who perform prayers. He did not say those who pray. No. He said those who perform their prayer. So we will be talking about that. So, so another action is giving the zakah and giving the sadaqah. So there is ways to do that there are ways to do that and there is a way of how to perform it just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another action is fasting how to perform our fasting how to how to fast uh in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting our fasting. We want our fasting not to be just abstaining from water and food and other things that Allah, the permissible things that Allah has allowed us to do during the day, except for when we are fasting. So we would just, we don't want just to abstain from things. We want to get the reward for abstaining of these things. Another action is Hajj. When we perform our Hajj, when we go to Hajj. So what are the things that we have to do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting our Hajj? So what are the things that we have to do so that Hajj will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Another action is reciting the Quran. What are the, the secrets of reciting the Qurans? What is the secret of reciting the Quran? How, how can we get the light of the Quran in our heart? 
another action. Remembrance. How do we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the best dhikr to do? What is the closest way to get the the uh, to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the best way? Then we will also be talking about seeking the lawful. So we know that there are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. He made things lawful for us. But there are things that are not lawful. We cannot do them. It's not permissible to get closer to them. So what are these lawful things that we can do to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then we will be talking about good companionship. Who is a companion in this dunya? What did Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about him? Or about her? What are the most important characteristics that we have to seek in a companion? And we have so many friends of Allah talking about companionships. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, talked a lot about a companion. And the the easiest way to think of a companion is what Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, Man yanhaduka, man yanhaduka ila Allahi haluh, A companion is the one who, if you sit with him, if you sit with her, if you sit with this person, you will feel immediately that your faith status is being elevated. When you hear his words, you will feel that his words or her words get you elevated, get you closer to Allah, get you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will be talking about companionship. We will also be talking about Commanding good and forbidding evil. How? What can we do? What is good? What's evil? How can the sound heart differentiate between good and evil? There is a fine line between them. How can we not get good and evil mixed up? How can we be aware of this fine line? And when we know what's good and what's, what's evil, how can we spread this word? How can we command good? And how can we forbid or get people to be away from, from evil? And we will end up with following the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? When we, when we pray, we read Surah Al-Fatiha. So we read Surah Al-Fatiha at least 17 times every day during our prayers. Twice in Fajr, four times in Dhuhr, four times in Asr, three times in Maghrib and four times in Aisha. So what do we say? What, what, what is the first dua that we say? Oh Allah, guide us to the right path. 
And some of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the right path to be Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path, then we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us connected to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are asking him to make us able to follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance to follow the light. This light that will enlighten our path along the journey that we are going on now towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what we need in this dunya. We need to perform these outer actions so that our heart will be expanded. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Haven't we expanded your, your heart? What does this mean? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the ability to understand everything. So he expanded his heart sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when our heart expands, it makes us aware of things that we were not aware earlier. It makes us uh, able to understand things that we were not understanding before. It makes us able to deal with people in a better way that we were not able to, to, to do before. It makes us understand our role in this dunya. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us in this dunya? What is our role in this dunya? Why are we here? What are the responsibilities that we are going to, to perform that we have to be aware of this in this dunya? So what is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where did we come from? Why are we here? Why are we in this universe? And where are we going to, to be after our death? What is this record that I am going to, re, to, to receive on the day of judgment? How, how should I fill my record? How should I be of the winners on the day of judgment? So, so many questions that we have to think of. So to be able to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be pleased with us. It's, it's uh, the, the pleasure of a person to be a winner on the day of judgment. And how can be how can someone be a winner by being in Al Firdaus Al Ala by missing hellfire? And this is this is a blessing. This is a real blessing because who who misses hellfire? Those whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is pleased with. So we want to be with the group of people who are winners on the day of judgment. The group of people about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an. So this dunya, this dunya is 
uh, in this dunya, we have a body and we have a soul. So living in this dunya means that the soul is connected to this body. And this is, of course, a blessing. Because if we do not get to know what is this blessing, then we would not be able to recognize the, the reward on the day of judgment or the uh, punishment on the day of judgment. So when we know that our, our body is connected to the soul, then we have a chance. We have a chance to correct any mistake that we do during the day. When you go to bed at the end of the day, just have a few minutes and try to scale your deeds of the day. What have you done? Is it good or evil? What have you said? Is it good or bad? What have you, how, how, how did you help this person? How did you perform on this thing? So scale your deeds when you have time before it's, before these deeds are scaled for you. So just get yourself ready to the day that you are going to be present before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, we will stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will ask us, have you done this action on this day? We'll say, yes, Ya Allah. He will say, have you done this on so-and-so day? We'll say, yes, Ya Allah. He will, he will ask us about every single thing that we have done in this dunya. Our record will have every single thing that we have done in this dunya, every single word that we have said in this dunya, every th single action that we have done. We looked at, at, at things. Were they lawful? Were they permissible? We have to have taqwa in this dunya that this taqwa will save us on the day of judgment. What's taqwa? Taqwa is, there are so many ways to define taqwa. But the easiest way is at-taqwa an yajiduka Allahu haythu amarak wa yaftaqiduka haythu nahak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will find you where he orders you to be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see you performing the things that he ordered you to do. And he will see you uh, 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 not performing what he has ordered you to be, uh, to abstain from. This is taqwa. And when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about taqwa, he pointed to his blessed heart and he said, At-taqwa ha huna, three times. So if you want to have taqwa, you have to, ha to have your heart connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that taqwa will be transmitted from his heart to your heart. This is taqwa. So in this dunya, we have to have taqwa. Some people saw this dunya as a place of eternal living. So they did not care about dying. They did not care about reckoning. So they did whatever they wanted. No rules. 
nothing to follow because they don't believe in, in, in meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thought that this is this is the this is the the uh, eternal life. They they did not consider that this life is just a journey to take us to the final destination, whether it is Jannah or Nar, Paradise or Hellfire. So this journey is a long journey. Whenever we are going on a trip, whether it is a few days or a few weeks or maybe a month or a year, we get prepared for this journey. We take all necessities that we need and we take other than necessities that we need. So along this journey that we are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are we preparing? How are we preparing ourselves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? On that day, it will be repeated. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ So everyone is a loser. Except that who came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. So, how can we get a sound heart? This is what we are going to learn in these series. So, this series will be focused on our outer actions. The next series, the series after, is going to, to focus about our characteristic as a Muslim. How should we fill our heart with? What should we fill our heart with? On the day of judgment, we will be having our records. What do we want these records to have? There will be huge, big uh, re uh, record filled with everything. Whether it's a big action or it's a speck of an action, speck of an atom of action, it will be in our record. So to get ready to read these records, we have to... Do what we just say. Scale your daily records. If you find something good, then thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has prepared you, that has enabled you to do something good. If you find that you have done something bad during the day, well, again, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you still have a chance to fix what you have done. Why? Because the minute death knocks our door, the repentance door is closed. Fixing things is done. We cannot do that. So just get ready. To, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the successful one is the one who, who listens to the hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow the orders of his hadith, follow the tips that he has given us. In one of the narrations, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كن في الدنيا كأنك غريب أو عابر سبيل وعد نفسك في أهل القبور So be in this dunya as if you are a stranger. 
or as if you are just a traveler and consider yourself as one of the people of the of those of the people of the graves why because when you consider yourself that in this dunya as a stranger then you don't care about all the the things that shaitan has adorned for people to follow to fall into his traps so you are a stranger you have just one goal you don't care about looking right and left you have a goal and you want to go straight to the to the end you don't want to follow uh just lines here and there you go right one time you go left one time you go backwards one time no just forward just go forward you have a mission just go directly you have a goal go directly to your goal do not get affected by the arrows that these dun this dunya is shooting against you and against your heart there's so many ways of getting distracted from this right path from this straight path we want to shield ourselves with the outer actions that we have just counted prayers zakah fasting hajj uh, quran uh, dhikr and all all the all the actions that we have just uh, uh, mentioned these will be will give us a shield around us that when the arrows of dunya are being shooted against us we are shielded we will not be affected calamities are all around all around us afflictions are all around us problems are all around us but we want to be strong and this is how we want to raise our new generation the new generation that we are responsible for we want to we want to raise strong generation ready to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ready to see you, to meet sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ready to be coolness of an eye to sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so be in this dunya as a stranger or as a traveler get as much sustenance as you can وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ There's so many ways that uh, we can do that, that are helpful for us when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ ذِكْر سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ There's so many easy things that we can do but these things have great protection for us so prepare yourself to the day when you are going to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare yourself for the day when death is going to knock on our doors one of the uh who would say وما الموت الا رحله غير انها من المنزل الفاني الى المنزل الباقي death is nothing but a journey a journey that takes us from this from this house which is from from this dunya that is going to vanish till to it takes us to from this dunya to the other dunya from this vanishing life to the eternal life and we want to be happy on that eternal life so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created his the the people he did not create create them for no reason 
and he did not leave them to do whatever they want for no with no restrictions no ayahsabu al-insan an yutraka suda amazing ayah in surah al-qiyamah ayah 36 is man going to be uh, does man think that he is going to to live without any restrictions to do whatever he wants no reward no punishment no one lady came to uh, one of the prophets and she was crying and earlier they used to live she came to uh, sayyidna nuh and if you if you, uh, the, the, the people at that time used to live hundreds of years 600 700 800 years and when he asked her why are you crying she said i lost my 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 son he was so young and he said he asked her how old is he and she said 300 years and he said, oh, he's young. You know, Sayyidina Nuh, you, you lived so long, he called his people 900 years, 950 years. That's the time when he called people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he told her, oh, your son is young. But what do you think? This is how he con comforted her. He said, how, what do you think of a group of people who are going to live, but they will live only 60 years, 70 years, 80 years. She said, oh my God, will there be, be such a group of people who will live so, such a very short time? He said, yes. She said, you know what? I think I will spend, if I am supposed to live 60 years, I will spend all my 60 years just doing one sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One sujood, 60 years. So imagine how our life should be. The life of the, the, the story of life and death on this, on this dunya is not just a story. If we read through the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares us for everything. He tells us what we are going, how we are going to live in this dunya and what we are going to, to, to uh, see on the day of judgment. What are the results of the way we live in this dunya? So the wise person lives in this dunya as if he is a stranger or as if he is a traveler who passes from one place, from one station to another station. Once there was a lady in the house, in a, in a train, sorry. So someone got on the train and that person bumped into her, dropped things on her, and he collected his things and then uh, went to the end of the train. And the person sitting next to her said to her, why you didn't say anything to this person? He hurt you. He got your clothes uh, dirty. He did. She said, it's just a journey. I'm stepping down next station. And this is how we should think of this dunya. We are on a journey that we are going to step down next station. We should get ready. With this introduction, we come to the end of our first session. Inshallah, next time we will go over the first the first uh, point that we have talked about, we are going to cover all these outer actions one by one to get the benefit, inshallah, to get our heart ready and prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 
he will be pleased of us. He will be pleased with all of us, inshallah. وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. And until we meet next week, I send my salam and I send your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we tell him, Ya Rasulullah, we love you. We want to be with you on the day of judgment. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.